United's best performance with the ball for some time, but how did they achieve it? Before I go into this game, this is what we've been seeing so far this season. Possession back three, a single pivot in front, and then a huge disconnect between the middle third and the final third. But against Palace, we saw United adopt this box midfield. Visually alone, we can see the possibility of better passing connections, and how the central overload has the potential to disrupt Palace's defensive setup. This is the first example of United imposing this setup on Palace. Firstly, a lot was made of Dallow inverting, which he did, but I like the rotation between Eriksen, Maynou and Dallow to create the double pivot. And here we have Dallow in the back three and Eriksen in the double pivot. In Palace's setup, Wharton and Kamada should have been picking up United's double pivot, but the overload has pulled Kamada away from Maynou, leaving Maynou open to play this line breaking pass. This time, Eriksen is the spare man, with Wharton occupied by Fernandez, enabling United to play through the pitch. In this situation, Wharton is miles off, he should be here, but I like this run from Maynou to pull Kamada out to completely free Eriksen. Now, as the ball is switched out to the left, we can see why Wharton didn't step up onto Eriksen, because Fernandez was behind him. As I've highlighted numerous times this season, the forward overload makes it easy for teams to defend us. And I highlighted United's need to get players dropping off the top line to create connective passing options. The deeper position of Fernandez and whoever else made up the top of the box made it difficult for Palace to decide who should take them, the defenders or midfield. The indecision often left United with a spare man. But this setup wasn't just about getting the ball into the pivots. Here, Eriksen is in his pocket at the top of the box, and Garnaccio has dropped deep to create this possession triangle to get around Palace's top line defence, and it's a nice move. Now, there is a caveat to all this. United tried to execute the same tactics against Southampton, but couldn't. Why? Against Palace, their front three of Eze, Mateta and Enketia pushed up onto United's back three possession formation, which allowed United's box midfield to overload Palace's midfield. As we can see here, Southampton's front two dropped back in on United's double pivot, which allowed Southampton's midfield to sit on the top of United's box, breaking up those potential passing connections. Although it was a good performance, we have to be real about this. Their formation is tailor-made for this setup, and not many teams play with a back three, leaving two in midfield. So can United replicate this against other sides? Without the ball, the closer proximity of United's midfield enabled them to be more competitive. Here, Eze gets on the ball and has three players pressurising him. He plays this pass over his head and Xerxes is dropping back in and United win the ball back. Finally, I want to focus on how United tweak their press formation from the usual hexagon. Because Palace played with a back three, to avoid an overload on United's usual front two setter, they went man for man on the back three and then went man for man behind that on Wharton and Kamada, and Palace struggled to play through this. Again, we can see how United went man for man on Palace's back three setter, and visually, there is nowhere to go, and they end up putting the ball at risk and giving it away. The devil's verdict is, in my opinion, in possession, this was the best United played since the first half against Wolves at Molyneux last season. The caveat to this is, Palace's formation, at least in part, facilitated United's ability to enforce the central overload, which they weren't able to do against Southampton. The next three games against Spurs, Villa and Brentford will tell us exactly how efficient United are in executing this new approach, or if Ten Hag will even stick with it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.